It's bad news on the bayou. This is your look at the new NECA Toys Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Slash and Leatherhead. After being accidentally exposed to radioactive ooze, four ordinary household pets are transformed into a band of wise-cracking, pizza-loving, villain-dicing adolescent reptiles. Meet Leonardo, the super-cool, sword-wielding leader. Raphael, the jokester, hurling manholes and one-liners in rapid succession. Donatello, the brain behind the brawn. And Michelangelo, the ice cream pizza gobbling party animal. Whether it's facing fierce enemies or saving humanity from near extinction, with the guidance of their sensei, these heroes in a half shell are always ready for straight out of the sewer action. Before getting some close-up looks at some new offerings of turtle toys from NECA, the first thing we're going to do is calculate how tall these figures actually stand. Both Slash and Leatherhead, of course, are different in sizes. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. While I am getting those numbers together for you, I'd like to send also a big thank you to the folks over at NECA Toys who provided the sample that we're having a look at right here. Slash and Leatherhead is available right now. If you're in the market of wanting to add these ones to your collection, I certainly don't blame you. These are pretty cool looking turtle toys. Slash stands at 5.2 inches in height. And switching that to centimeters, you're looking at the figure standing 13.2 centimeters tall. Of course, it goes without saying that Leatherhead is going to be a lot taller than Slash. Now let's figure out just how tall that is. Taking the tape measure to the very top of his hat, and that seems to be the highest point after all, and stopping it right there. Leatherhead stands rather impressively at seven inches, seven inches exactly. And switching that to centimeters, then you're looking at the figure standing 17.8 centimeters tall. Figure we'll have a look at Slash first, and just before we get a closer look at the figure, let's bring in some of the other figures just for some size comparisons. Wanted to show you what he looks like stacked up to some of the other baddies that we had a look at before. There he is next to the Shredder. And we'll also bring in the Foot Soldier because I don't feel like Foot Soldiers get nearly enough love. Obviously, they, he's going to be a little bit shorter than, say, Shredder and Foot Soldier. And to give you a closer proximity of how Slash stacks up, we'll bring in some of the Turtle Toys as well. Here's Leonardo and packing some nunchucks with him. Here is Michelangelo, just to kind of give you a rough idea. Slash is, on average, about the same size as the regular cartoon turtles, yet considerably smaller when you compare them, say, to the likes of Shredder and a foot soldier here. More comparisons, yells the viewing audience. Okay, okay. We can bring in also Bebop. And, of course, if we're going to bring in Bebop, we'll bring in Rocksteady as well. I'm going to probably bring these two back anyways when we have a closer look at Leatherhead. But to also just give you an idea, yeah, Slash Slash a little bit shorter. He is a little bit shorter than both Rocksteady and Bebop. Having a look at the figure's accessories, we'll start perhaps with the smallest. And he gets himself a little regular version of himself, a little baby Slash. Oh, he's so adorable. One nice little touch, I giggle when I see this, is these googly eyes that they've painted on the sides of Slash's face. For its size, when you consider how small this actually is, they really put a lot of detail, even to the point that they actually painted the underside of his shell. Of course, you can't have a little regular version of Slash without his most prized possession in the entire world, his little tiny Binky. Binky was his palm tree that accompanied him in his little fishbowl. And of course, he spends a lot of time looking for Binky. Uh, the little palm tree, as you can see, is all really painted, more so all sculpted in this slightly soft green plastic. It doesn't give you a display stand, so unfortunately it's not the easiest of things to stand upright. But so fun, in fact, that we would actually even get a little regular version of Slash and his little tiny binky as well. He also gets himself a pie, a pizza pie, as you can see pepperoni and what seems to be extra sauce. The thing is just literally swimming in its own sauce. And you can see there's a bite mark that's been done on the front here. 
Just a nice little accompanying piece, even if, if anything, you don't use it to be displayed with Slash, you can most definitely use it with any number of the other turtles that we've gotten before. You see the sculpting on the underside? Mm, that's a delicious looking pie. Makes me now crave pizza myself. Pepperoni for me is where it's at. Apparently Slash only prefers pepperoni, as it doesn't seem to have any other toppings on here to speak of. For his larger accessories, Slash does come included with the Animalizer gun. One thing I really love about NECA's releases of Turtle Toys is that they pull accessories specific to episodes. So if you follow the Turtles, certainly I did growing up, you'll recognize this probably right off the bat, if you're familiar at least with that episode. Classic to the cartoon, it's done all here in white, with some little bands and strips done in dark gray, the tanks on top done in a slightly lighter gray with some red on the front. This section is slightly softer plastic, so you may want to tread lightly and make sure that you don't bend and warp that. Thank goodness when I did get this out of the packaging, there was no warpage to speak of on the Animalizer gun. I'm really thrilled again that NECA Toys would take the time and include this with their release of Slash. Speaking of episode-specific weaponry, Slash also includes the laser rifle that was seen in the episode Donatello Trashes Slash. Not only is Donatello met now with a much smarter Slash, but he is also being fired at by this laser rifle that Slash is carrying around with him. Like in the cartoon, it's very accurately recreated here, done in plastic, an all-dark gray rifle. Of course, with some colors done of purple on both ends of the front. And you've got a little bit of purple there also on the side as well. I love the panel lining of black that they also put into this as well. With some additional black on the underside also. This can be fit into his hand as well as the animalizer gun. So again, it's nice to see that they include things like this. That as a fan of the show, you can kind of know that maybe while you don't recognize the episode specifically, you may think to yourself, I remember Slash wielding that, and apparently NECA does too by incorporating these with their figure releases. Perhaps not as interesting as firearms, Slash also comes included with a pair of katanas, though not completely identical. If you look at the katanas, while the blades seem almost exact to one another, the hilts themselves, one is a slight darker shade of this pineapple yellow. I also noticed on this hilt, there's a little bit of paint I believe may have flaked off, or something maybe at the factory level, a little bit of paint defect right there on the hilt. But other than that, I mean, it's a really nice looking katana blades. Both of them, like all the other accessories we're looking at when it comes to these turtles, look cartoon accurate simply just because they add all this additional black panel lining. It runs for the full length of the blade. It even has it right where the blade is attached to the hilt guard. And that's a nice touch as well. If you are looking to display these, these can fit into that hands, of course, of Slash. But there's a couple other places as well. For example, his belt is made of a slightly softer plastic. Just enough leeway that you can take one of the katanas, or you can take two katanas if you wanted to, and they could just sit inside just like that. He technically also has another rubber strap that attaches his backpack that he has in the cartoon to the rest of his body. And we'll talk a little bit about that right now. Technically, you could be able to house the katana right here also, one or two of them. The backpack, though, if you look at it, it's attached by this piece right here. The idea is that this is something that can be removed, and it can be removed. The problem with it, though, is that this attaches, you just basically attach the backpack here, and then this leather strap, this rubber strap, I should say, fits around the side. And the idea is it's supposed to attach into these holes. Well, one difficulty comes is that these are also rubbery plastic. So there's just not nearly enough durability, uh, st uh, st like stableness to, I think, these little prongs that they fit well enough into these holes. And a lot of times when I am trying to fit these in, I can get one of them in, but just because the the plastic isn't rigid enough, it doesn't want to stay inside here. Now, obviously, there's a route that you could go. You could glue that in place, but that would then mean that you wouldn't be able to remove this piece right here. I'm sure you're also asking yourself the question, well, if it isn't attached by anything, how are you even keeping it in place? Well, just between you and me, I'm just using a little bit of tape. Just tape that, just the backside there. 
just enough that I could keep it in place. The idea really is that it, this is supposed to fit around. And uh, as I said, this is supposed to stretch out and it's supposed to attach into these holes. But the plastic, like I said, is just way too soft. It's a way, way too soft and it just doesn't fit well enough into those holes. So again, you can either go the route of gluing this in place, which I really, really don't want to do. Or I may find myself maybe just, I don't know, if just attaching it just with a little bit of tape or something right there. Again, I just wish that this could have been attached a little bit better than what it was. I don't know if they could have just simply just had this a permanently attached strap. And maybe you would have just had to have been able to fit this over Slash's head. Maybe take off his head sculpt and maybe just slide the backpack on this way. As I feel like just attaching it going this route, it's just not as successful as I would hope. Seeing though, as I've already let the cat out of the bag, we'll just go ahead and remove the backpack. Like I said, I just used a little bit of rolled up tape. Um, you can see, let me go ahead and just take this tape off because it's really not part of the figure. There we go. Just peel that off. Uh, you can see there's some um, additional panel lining that's been done on the inside of his pack. And that's what it looks like on the outside. Again, it looks really accurate to the way it looks in the cartoon. Even when I take this off of Slash, his torso, I still have really a, a tough difficulty for actually getting these prongs inside the holes. I just wish like the plastic was a little denser, just enough that I guess they didn't want this to potentially break. Whereas if this was softer plastic and this was a denser plastic, I suppose if anything, there would be the risk that if you're forcing this in, uh, there would there could be a potential for this breaking off. Like I said, like even if you take it off, there's a little less tension going against the belt so that you can fit it in. Like it does stay in there. It's a little bit more difficult though when you are actually doing this around Slash's body. Anyways, we'll move that to the side and we'll have a closer look at the figure itself. Now this is Slash pulled, of course, from the animated series, the original Ninja Turtle cartoon. So he varies a little bit from the Slash that we had gotten before from the Turtles in Timeline. I kind of like that one a little bit more than this one. I've never really been a big fan of the design of this one, though I have to admit the details and it looking cartoon accurate is definitely there. Right down to the individual warts that he's got on the side of his face, right down to the one eye patch that he's got on this makeshift mech uh, bandana that he wears. I like the expression also that they put on his face as well. Don't know if you can actually see there, but they even used a different shade of pink to the color pink that they used for his tongue. Again, you've got a lot of panel line going on here, both in the teeth, even the areas around the under section of his lip, they've also done a black panel line there as well to make it look even more cartoon accurate. These guys' little shoulder guards, these are done in soft plastic, so there's less likely that these are gonna be breaking off on you. He's got his poison or skull uh, front belt buckle here. And like I said, these this is just a soft plastic. So if you wanna put the katanas in there, just display them if you have them displayed with the guns instead. They can easily quite fit in there, no problem whatsoever. Decent coloring on this guy. He's about the color of what I would consider like a swamp green. He's not quite the same color as the turtles. For example, we'll bring in again Leonardo so that you can see. The colors are almost there, though I have to feel that Slash's colors are just almost just a hair, just a hair darker in contrast. Looks a little bit more, there's a little different color, slightly different color than Leonardo's there. Still has the cell shaded coloring there where you've got the shadow there on the back of his arm. It's also on the back of his leg. And even it's also located here on the back of his head sculpt as well. Looking at the sizing of his shell. Actually, you know what? We'll bring in Leonardo in again so you guys can see. The shell is very different. Lots of additional spikes sticking out from the back of Slash's shell, both here around the outer parameter as well as on the inside here too. By the way, in case you are curious, these are uh, slightly softer, but they do have a little bit of a like a prick end to it. So while you're picking it up, you may feel that, especially if you're grabbing it from the sides of Slash's shell here. That's a bit of a tongue twister, isn't it? Also, when you look at his gloves, for example, he's got a couple of spikes going on there as well. Spikes sticking out from his knee pads, though unlike his shell, this, the little spikes sticking out from his knees are a little bit more softer and less likely to prick your finger. 
So looking at the figure's articulation, his head rotates back and forth. As well, it hinges up and hinges down. One obvious thing I've seen as well is that he has a larger cavity on the underside of his head. And I think why they did do that, so that there, it allowed for a little bit of extra clearance when it came to shifting his head back and forth, up and down. If the head was closer to the neck, I don't feel like you'd be able to accomplish as much. The head also rotates all the way around, but I will say though, as you're rotating, you probably see it for yourself, it does run awfully close, too close for comfort if you ask me, to the back of his shell. This could potentially run the risk of flaking and chipping the paint off, so you want to be very careful of that. I would just stick to the norm of what a normal turtle would be able to do, just like I said, back and forth this way. The shoulders hinge out uh, forward and back this way. Um, one thing you will see, hopefully you can see in there, is that they don't have nearly enough of an open groove allowing the arms to hinge any further out than what I've been able to get right here. Uh, you can hinge them down perfectly fine, but I don't know if you can see it. There's very little. I mean, there's more of a there's more of a track that the arms can hinge this way. But when it comes to the top of the shoulder, the sculpt leads right to the top of his body. So there's very little in the way of navigating out that arm beyond this point right here. Despite that, though, the arm still rotates fine out all the way around. And because he does have these shoulder guards done in softer plastic, it means that when you are moving the arms, for example, it's not clipping and stopping abruptly. The rubber kind of allows the arms to rotate all the way around a little bit better. It does have a bend in the elbow. And with that, the forearm also rotates back and forth. And his hands also rotate all the way around perfectly fine. Uh, he does have the waist articulation as well. It's a little hidden, granted, yes, it's underneath the belt, but it does allow the rotation of the waist back and forth this way. And he has a little bit of a rock this way as well. The legs split out. They're a little bit more graced, I would say, with some additional articulation that the arms wouldn't be able to do. And they, those hinge out forward and back. And he has a swivel at the top cut of the thigh, basically where that, that thigh attaches to the ball joint inside. He has a bend at the knee, double bend in the knee to be exact, and he does also have foot articulation, both up, down, and a rock back and forth. Admittingly, just between you and me, I think I prefer the reason for picking up this set, I think, is for the leather head. I really like the design of this one. Nothing saying necessarily is wrong with Slash. Slash is a really des neat designed looking turtle. Um, if anything, I would say for uh, uh, negatives, not necessarily. It's just really the backpack. Again, I wish the backpack would be attached a little bit better than what it is. Just by only relying on those two prongs. Uh, again, if you just wrap this around here. First of all, it just makes things way too tight. And again, if these prongs were just made of a more rigid plastic, I feel they would do a better job of attaching into those holes. I struggle more so trying to get these in than I do any of the other accessories that come included with these two figures. So let's now have a look at Leatherhead, who I feel is the stronger figure of the two. And I'm not just simply saying that because he's the tallest of the two figures. Slash was a fine and good figure, and he looked like his cartoon counterpart. But personally speaking, I always liked the design of the original Playmates Slash. So I feel I gravitate a little bit more towards the design of the Turtles in Time Slash versus the way he looks in the cartoon. Before we have a closer look at Leatherhead, let's just bring in a couple of figures again for some size comparisons. We'll bring in Shredder. Of course, we always have to bring in Shredder. By the way, I'm really looking forward to getting an Android Krang. Uh, also, some size comparisons as well. We'll bring in the likes of Rocksteady. Rocksteady is a large figure, yes, but he's not as large, it seems, as Leatherhead himself. Maybe we'll just move Shredder out of the way just for one second here, and we'll bring in the likes of Bebop. Again, Bebop and Rocksteady up to this point were the tallest and biggest figures that NECA were producing for the Turtles, and yet they're still slightly smaller than the likes of Leatherhead. And also, of course, some comparisons for the Turtles. We're bringing the Turtles right now. The Turtles were always generally the smallest of the batch. They were smaller, much smaller than both Rocksteady and Bebop, and again, they're being towered over by Leatherhead here in the background. Looking at the accessories that come included with old Leatherhead, he comes with also a fair share of them. Most of them are more so specifically to be put on the figure that he carries around for decoration. And yet that, he still comes with some episode-specific accessories as well. Like, for example, this one. 
He comes included with his flamethrower gun, seen in at least one of the episodes called Night of the Rogues, one that stands out for me at least, because it sort of has the Shredder band together multiple villains that we've seen in the past previous Turtle episodes, and they sort of form an Injustice League. He uses this gun as a flamethrower. How these ketchup bottles possibly squirt fire is beyond me, but it's, again, it's an episode-specific accessory, so I like the fact that they would include that. You, of course, have the red coloring done in the bottles, labels on the underside done in yellow, and some dark meshing done in black panel lining. Now, this does fit in his hand. One of the hands he comes included with, let's just go ahead and grab that one right now, he comes with this one that is specifically for trigger finger. Now, the unfortunate thing about this some of the heating up that I've done. I generally don't heat my NECA figures. If you get them out of the packaging and you sort of give it an opportunity to kind of play around with them and loosen up those joints, you shouldn't have too much of an issue. I did end up having to heat his tail, which I'll talk about in a second. And then I, I ended up having to heat this as well. And still, despite that, there is some difficulty I've noticed with trying to get the gun into his hand. And while I am doing that, unfortunately, what the end result is, it ends up flaking off the paint on his hands. You'll see a little bit here also on, his, on my fingers. So it would suggest this does fit into his hand, but I probably will have to go back and heat it up again. Because unfortunately, like I said, the paint has flaked off of the hand all the times that I've been putting the handle inside the hand, the, the grip itself. Basically, what you're going to need to do is you have to get it in between the thumb and the fingers and as you feed this down as I, I as I would probably again suggest that you do stress that you do is heat the hand up in hot water hot boiling water you really don't have to have it in there for very long uh, it did allow me to pry the fingers away get the handle of the gun in between his grip or inside his grip but because it's a denser plastic that they use I find it never it always seems to remain still dense and hard to get in there. I would even go the further route of even saying, if you have something a little bit bigger than, that's, than the thickness of this handle, maybe use that as the means to separate his grip even wider so that the next time you put the gun into his hand, you're not going to have any real problems. Uh, just again, be careful when you're feeding and navigating the handle through that you probably are going to result in flaking off some of the paint that they've painted on Leatherhead's hand here. The figure also includes a pair of crawdads. If you're not quite sure what a crawdad is, it's basically a crustacean. It's a little small lobster. And as you can see, it's done in a lighter shade, almost a peach color on the top, with a darker version, almost more cooked, on the bottom. These are made of a softer plastic, so you're less likely to have issues fitting these into his hand, for example. If you grab one of his hands, you can quite easily fit the tail portion of this crustacean in between the thumb and his three fingers, and he holds it perfectly fine. If you want to display, however, the crawdad onto him himself, or on the figure itself, all you're basically going to do is grab the figure here, and on the front of his belt, he's got a couple of loops. He's got one right there, and he's got one right there. You're going to go ahead and take the crawdad, and you're just going to take basically the hook end of it, the bottom of the claw, and you just feed that through just like so. Because of the angle that you're putting them in, it basically will have them just sitting very easily, very comfortably in place on the side of his belt. Um, you can also do the exact same thing on the other side as well. We'll just go ahead and take this, grab the claw, feed it through the hole, it can be any bit easier than that, and you basically just have them displayed like this. Now, in the cartoon, I've seen instances where Leatherhead has these, but they're not like this, they're generally like this. One thing that you can also do too, I'll just pull this one out of his belt, is that because his belt is a soft enough plastic, you can also take the tail of the crawdad and you just feed it and kind of wedge it above into the belt itself. It will result in having the belt kind of sticking out a bit but if you want to have it where he actually is holding carrying them around by his tail by the tails of these again you're just going to feed them underneath the belt and you can just display him like that he also comes included with a functioning trap which does actually open up 
It's been painted only in gray with no additional paint of shadow or highlights to it. So it does look a little bit more like it does in the cartoon. It doesn't really technically fit in his hand. I mean, if you take one of his wider gripped hands, for example, you sort of can rest the trap on it. But the intended plan, I don't think, is actually for him to be carrying these around. Sort of you can do with that. Or what you can also do, very carefully pick this up, located on the side of the figure, right on the back here, there's a little clip. You see that? If you're not too careful and you have ham hands, you could probably break this if you're not too careful. But basically what you're going to do is if you look at the trap, you see the pedal isn't quite dead center. It's further over on this side. There's just enough of a ledge that you can take the trap and it just fits into the clip just like that. You really don't want to apply too much pressure, but it's more than enough to hold the trap in place. Uh, the clip really isn't intended for anything else. And like I said, if you're not too careful and you force that down, the, the thin nature of that, that little C clip would most likely break. But again, if you're an adult collector and you're very careful with putting these things on, they hold perfectly fine and the trap isn't going to be going anywhere. He also comes included with a restraining collar, done also in the same gray as the trap that we looked at before. This does open and close. You will be wanting to be careful because, of course, it's just a hinge, a peg hinge that's holding the two pieces together. The chain is a real metal chain, which is a nice touch, and that connects out, just loops around the top area here, and it just basically runs loose from that. You could technically wrap this around his hand if you wanted to. There's a couple of things you can do with this this collar for the time being. You can either clamp it around Leatherhead's arm, for example, if you want to dis dis just to display it until you really have a purpose that you want to make use of it for. Uh, what you can also do too, is just detach that, put the figure down here for a second. If you have yourself a neighboring turtle, I just happen to have Leonardo here. So sorry, Leo, you have to be the guinea pig in this. You basically just take the collar and it fits around a turtle's head, just like that. When we do eventually have a look at April O'Neil, you can also take that same collar and it fits around her waist. Again, remind me, I'll show you guys that when we have a look at April O'Neil. So you can actually have Leatherhead carrying around the turtles by neck or carrying around April O'Neil by her waist. And like I said, it can just sort of drape in his hand. For the time being of displaying the figure, I feel more inclined to probably just clamp this around his arm, for example, like I did sort of at the beginning of this review, just clip this in place. Be very careful, of course. And uh, once that's clipped together, there we go. All you're then going to do is just wrap this around. Just like that. Just wrap it around his arm. Just sort of to get rid of the excess. So if he wants to carry it around with him. Lastly, the figure does come with a series of interchangeable hands. Some of which we've already discussed. But he comes with a pair of grabbing hands. Good for mauling some turtles. Those are a nice touch. I love the coloring, by the way, that they used for this. We'll talk more of that when we have a look at Leatherhead himself. We've already looked at this hand, ideal for holding the flamethrower gun, for example. And he does also come with this hand right here, good and suited for holding the crawfish, which we've already looked at also as well. So there's a couple of hands that you can make use of. Currently in the sock, it's not the most interesting of hands to be discussing, but he comes with a pair of closed fists as well. Uh, probably just pop these out and just to show you that you just wiggle these off free the peg from its socket like that and then just uh again if you want to maybe use yeah you know what we'll use this we'll use the gun hand for the time being just put that into his hand like that again i'm probably going to go back and i think heat that hand up again see if i can widen the grip even though i did do it already I feel like it's not wide enough that I'm still feel I'm suffering from flaking that paint off of the interior of his hand. Speaking of heating, by the way, one other thing that you will want to do when you get the figure out of the packaging is add this tail. This right here. Separate piece. And it has sort of the same difficulty if you've ever gotten the NECA Godzilla figures, for example. The tail basically works the exact same way. Although I did have more difficulty getting it onto the ball joint, it seemed, on this one than I did with the previous Godzillas. So all I did was I just took this tail. You don't even have to worry about heating this part of it. What you want to do is soften the socket section that attaches to the ball joint. So take this and just submerge it in hot water. It doesn't have to be super boiling water. I ran a kettle just for a little bit until it, it didn't even get full, 
halfway through its cycle, but it was just enough that the water was hot, not scalding, just hot. Submerged the tail inside of that, and then it slipped on. It was soft like butter. It wasn't really soft like butter, but the tail is in place, and it does give you some additional articulation where you can move that up and down, but I, we're not really going to be talking about that just yet. Let's have a look finally at Leatherhead, a turtle figure I've been so anxiously awaiting. I've always been a big fan of Leatherhead. Leatherface I've also been a big fan of, but not quite the same genre. Imagine if Leatherface made the Rounds and Turtles cartoons. That would be quite dire. But I really like the head sculpt here on uh, Leatherhead. Now, we're technically getting two versions of Leatherhead. A standalone Turtles in Time release, which is basically like this, this one right here, although he's going to be more green than this color that we're getting right here. Uh, we will be having a look at that one also on this channel as well, so you can stay tuned for that. The head sculpt, though, is fantastic on this release. He does have a mouth that does actually open and close. And inside, say ah, ah, you can see the inside, not quite tonsils, but almost the next best thing. You can see, fully see how much paint they actually put on the inside of his jaw. He does have some sharp teeth there on either side. Uh, they're not sharp teeth, thank goodness for that, but they have also painted the tips of them, or I guess the ends of them that sink inside the gums. That's a nice touch as well. Just again, it makes it look more and more like it's the cartoon version of Leatherhead. Love the coloring of his eyes also as well. Big beady eyes staring right back at you. All this additional panel lining that they ran across the entire length of his nose. He also has that in between his eyes. And he even also has that on his hat as well. Which, just in case you are wondering, no, is not removable. It's made of a soft plastic. Between, I don't know, of the coloring, the sheen, and the fact it's made of soft plastic. It kind of looks like cherry taffy. Mm, cherry taffy. Looking at the rest of the figure, though, he has a visible chest area where you can see the little folds of his skin. Of course, has his vest going on here as well. And like with the other turtle figures that we've looked at, he has also that shading happening. Has it running down the length of his arm, even has it here on his jaw as well. And he has a slightly darker shade of brown located on the back of his vest, too. The vest isn't a separate piece from his torso. In fact, what they actually did do, this piece, this chest piece here, is the same sculpt as the vest. And then both those pieces are softer plastic that they basically put over top of the frame of the figure underneath. I'm very clever the way that they did that. Now, I do feel like NECA did reuse some of the parts, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. If, for example, we bring in Rocksteady, it seems like they have used the same arms. And while there would definitely be no argument that they used, they didn't use the same torso, as Rocksteady isn't the most in shape of the mutants, uh, you can definitely see, though, that they've used the exact same arm. And that's not, and that, that, that doesn't bother me at all, even in the slightest. Uh, the legs are different, though. Uh, he does have some additional reach on his legs. Leatherheads is a lot longer than uh, Rocksteady's is. Now, in case you are also curious, uh, we can grab, where is he? Where is he? We can grab Bebop, and uh, I'll show you guys the comparison between him and Bebop. Just give me one second. Strange. I thought I had Bebop right next to me, but apparently not. Uh, Bebop also uses the same arms, or I guess it should be the other way around. Leatherhead uses the same arms as Bebop, short of the fact that Bebop also has the little shells on his shoulders. The legs seem to be brand new molds. I thought perhaps the thighs may have been the same, but it seems almost like Bebop's thighs are just a little thicker than Leatherhead's here on the side. So there are a few things, maybe i got to believe, that underneath this piece could perhaps be living the chest piece that was on Bebop. Again, making use of the mold and making use of these rubber o overlays is a smart route that NECA goes so that they don't have to brand new create a brand new mold from scratch. Again, they're probably just producing this piece here and putting it over top of the existing body as this is, again, slightly softer. Again, you've got the shading here done on his arms. It continues in much starker the contrast when we look at his legs. Jet black, it almost seems, on the back end of it. Well, you have more of the purple color here represented on the front. This belt, as I've already looked at and discussed, is a softer plastic. 
And it does have a little bit of move, uh, a little bit of shifting ability to it where you can move it around. While you are moving the figure, I want to again stress, be careful running against this clip. This C clip would be the most acceptable, I feel, to breaking on the figure. So you want to be careful of that. But I, overall, I just really love the design on this particular leatherhead. Again, this is one of two leatherheads that we are getting from uh, NECA Toys. We are getting this one, which we were looking at in this review. And then we're also going to be getting the Turtles in Time leatherhead, which I think is the same figure. It's just going to be closer in green to the more, I don't know, aquamarine or aqua teal marine color that we got with this release here. For the articulation on leatherhead, his head rotates back and forth. It also moves up and it moves down. I haven't had any issues with the head, although being that he is so close in quarters to his uh, vest here, for example, as you are shifting the head back and forth, you sort of can hear it. It's kind of rubbing up against the side of the vest, but there's no issues whatsoever. You move it up, you move it down. As I said, no issues whatsoever. I always stress this if you guys are picking these pieces up for themselves. I've never had any issues with things breaking on NECA figures, short of maybe the few little like predator pieces like hoses and stuff like that. Generally, the rule of thumb I always find is as soon as you get the figure out of the package and just sort of very carefully move and very smoothly turn the joints. You don't want to be rough and abrupt with them. Even like the head, for example, if you just move it slightly back and forth, up and down, providing you're not too harsh on it, you shouldn't have any issues with the head breaking at all. Uh, like I said, there's some articulation in the mouth. You can move that open and close. The, the arms shift out at not quite a full 90 degree bend, more closer, I would say, to perhaps an 80 degree angle bend. The arms rotate all the way around. He has a swivel on the top bicep section. It basically connects to the shoulder. He has also, in addition to that, he has a double hinge on the elbow. Still a little stiff on this figure, but he does have the double hinge on the elbow working there. The hands rotate all the way around, and you can also hinge those back and forth. Leatherhead also has torso articulation. Be mindful, of course, of that clip back and forth, and you can rotate this back and forth this way. I want to be really careful, especially when you are coming to rotating the waist. Because the vest will get awfully close to that clip, you don't want to abruptly jerk it. And again, that could potentially break on you. Legs split out. Uh, you can go forward and back on the legs. They swivel at the top cut of the thigh. He has a double hinge on the knee. There's one hinge and a second hinge right there. Just a little, just again, a little tight, but just loosen up. Just keep playing around with those figures and you'll loosen those joints up perfectly fine. Hot water you certainly could use. People have asked me, do you want, would you use hot water? I generally only use it when it comes honestly to adding things like tails, for example, or to widen the grip on the hand. Generally, when it comes to figures, I don't really heat these things too much. Like I said, it's just a case of moving the legs slowly until eventually they free themselves up. So he's got a double hinge happening there on the knee. He has articulation on the foot back and forth, and that also rocks back and forth. And just in case you are curious for his size, Leatherhead also has peg holes on the undersides of his feet. He doesn't have any issues standing up necessarily, but if you do have any issues, just make use of a display stand for the figure. Two last things I certainly want to discuss before I send you guys on your merry little way. He comes with two other accessories. I sort of decided I wanted to leave this for the last just because of what they are. He comes with large rope. Uh, it's sort of tied off as a noose, as you can see right here, that you can also increase the size of it. Like in the episode, you can take the noose or the roping and you can just sort of fit it over top of Leatherhead's body, just like that. And you can then tighten it up. Um, he had been tied up in an episode before, so, I mean, you can certainly recreate that with this figure. It's strange, actually, and kind of neat, the fact that they would use real rope. I guess there really wouldn't be a way around that. You wouldn't want to mold this from plastic. It just doesn't seem to make any sense. So making use of real rope probably is the next, well, it's probably the best thing that they could have possibly used. And then he also comes included with a net. The net opens up. And it actually has these threadings, just continuations really of the same material here in the corners that you can use to then trap turtles and you can suspend them up by simply just grabbing the, the corners there. So again, we'll just take a couple of turtles just to show you here. We'll put Leonardo, poor, poor Leonardo. He's always 
always up to being the guinea pig. And again, we'll bring in Michelangelo just for, for the purpose of this. You can grab the corners. Uh, they're not long enough, mind you, to attach. I guess if you had a secondary string attaching to this, or if you were if you had them close enough to something, like for example, if you tied these all up like this, I guess there is enough clearance that you could have the turtles trapped and you could have good old leather head next to them. So that's a nice touch that they would include this as well. Very unlikely I would find myself ever displaying the turtles in the trap. If anything, I might even find myself using this perhaps for a predator figure, something else that Nekatois has also produced. More fun turtle toys come to us from the folks over at NECA Toys. Both Slash and Leatherhead perfectly capture the way that they look in the cartoon, right down to episode-specific accessories that both Slash and Leatherhead get. While admittingly, I think I still like Leatherhead more of the two, it more chalks up to the fact that I just don't like the design of this Slash. I never really did. I like the design of the Turtles in Time Slash because he's more nostalgic for me to the original a playmate slash that I picked up as a kid. This design of slash, while he does look very accurate to the way he looks in the cartoon, just not feeling it as much. I wish the backpack, unfortunately, was a little bit easier to peg into place. That's my really only issue I have with slash, being that the prongs were done in a soft, soft rubbery plastic. It's almost next to impossible, it seems, to peg those into those holes. You seem to be able to do it okay when it's not on him. But then when you're stretching that across his torso and then fitting that in place, I can't seem to get those prongs to line up perfectly and sit and stay inside. Ultimately resorting to double-sided tape, bit of a cheat perhaps, yes. Here in Final Looks, I've just decided to leave it off. I don't even know if I'm going to display Slash with the backpack. I'm still on the fence about that. Leatherhead, on the other end, is a stunning-looking figure. Again, looks the way he looks in the cartoon. This is one of two different uh, Leatherheads that we are going to be getting. I feel like we're now covered the territory for Slash. There's not much more terrain to cover. Leatherhead, on the other hand, we are looking at already the cartoon one in this review. But we are also going to be looking at the Turtles in Time version of him, which isn't that much different, I think, in body, but a lot different in color. So we'll be having a look at him in an upcoming review. Again, the only issues with Leatherhead is just the tail getting in place. That is a case where I would say use the hot water technique because fitting that ball joint on was difficult until I submerged it in hot water and I was perfectly fine. These, though, they are geared towards a cartoon that kids would have grown up with. These, I still feel, are geared towards adults. It's not to say that you couldn't give these to kids, but there are smaller things on these figures that have the possibility of breaking specifically that C-clip located on the side of Leatherhead's belt. If you're not careful and you're rough housing the figure, that C-clip can most definitely break. If you're careful with it, it can easily hold the trap, and that trap isn't going to be going anywhere. I like that you also get yourself the collar piece that can either fit around a turtle's head or it can fit around the waist of the upcoming look at April O'Neil, another figure that luckily NECA Toys has released. I think up to this point, the only turtle figure that we haven't really gotten is Splinter. I'm not sure why we haven't gotten a Splinter just yet, but I gotta believe it's working. Nekatoys is working on that as I'm sure as we speak. Let me know down below in the comment section though what you guys think of the Slash and Leatherhead and what your favorite figure is of the two that we had to look at. Also, if you're new to the channel and liking the content that you're seeing, consider the idea of hitting that subscribe button down below. Consider the idea of turning on the bell notification and consider the idea of staying tuned to this channel as there's definitely going to be a lot of videos coming your way. We're going to be looking at a whole ton of NECA reviews lined up in coming videos, so stay tuned for that. Again, a big thank you to the folks over at NECA Toys for supplying the sample of both Slash and Leatherhead that we're having a look at in this review, as well as a couple of other pieces that we're going to be having a look at in upcoming reviews as well. Also, keep your peepers peeled to this channel Monday to Friday at 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's when you'll find new videos popping up. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.